As the year 2022 begins, the Horgan government shift away from the promises which helped them win elections in 2017 and 2019 has become even more evident. Recent months have highlighted several key areas where the NDP has retreated further in the face of pressures and demands by big business. The continued disastrous emphasis on resource extraction and export strategies, the use of the RCMP for mass arrests of Indigenous land defenders and environmentalists, the appalling decision to limit annual paid sick time for employees to just five days. The response to all this is a growth of cynicism and anger against the NDP in British Columbia, even among their supporters in the working class and the Indigenous movements, people who hoped that the defeat of the Liberals would bring positive change to this province. Now, the Horgan government's failing record on the COVID pandemic crisis has sent their popularity into a further decline. Everywhere in the capitalist world, including in British Columbia, the changing and difficult nature of this virus has brought complications. But most governments, including the NDP here, have failed to heed the consistent warnings that the healthcare system needs to be expanded and strengthened. Instead, healthcare spending has been the target of neoliberal slashing and privatization, while the rich and corporations benefit from huge tax cuts. This has left British Columbia poorly prepared for the COVID emergency. During the initial pandemic months, BC had lower rates of infection and hospitalizations than most of the rest of North America. But after coasting on this early success, politicians here increasingly acted mainly on business demands to open up the economy. As infection and hospitalization rates rise and fall, mixed signals have been sent by the government and health officials in terms of crucial decisions around schools, public gatherings, masking rules, vaccination timetables, and mandates, and so forth. Here, as elsewhere, politicians have tried to deflect public anger by focusing on the outrageous actions of so-called anti-vax far-right forces, which target unionized health care and education workers, hospitality sector employees, and other frontline workers. But the Horgan government's response to the latest wave of infections and serious illnesses related to the Omicron variant signals that it considers major investment in improved health care measures and public protections to be too expensive. The BC Committee of the Communist Party condemns the Horgan government's weak and confused response to this mass disability event. Shamefully, the government continues to downplay Omicron as mild for those without pre-existing conditions. They're even preparing to close the long COVID clinic in Abbotsford. We strongly support the demands of teachers, healthcare workers, and others for mass distribution of top quality masks, a much more robust testing system, stronger regulations on public gatherings during the Omicron wave, installation of HEPA air filters in schools, 14 days of paid annual sick leave, the restoration of emergency COVID payments by both federal and provincial governments and other measures. We renew our demand for an immediate increase in social assistance and disability rates to help those facing the greatest health obstacles at this critical and difficult time. The priority of governments today must be to protect public health, not to cave into the pressures of big business demands to force employees back to work back to their job sites under unsafe conditions.